Hey everyone, last week the Federal Reserve put their foot down and took a more hawkish stance on interest rates. They raised the federal funds rate by 75 basis points, taking the benchmark overnight rate to 1.5%. That was a bit of a surprise. Chairman Powell previously gave guidance suggesting they would only make a 50 basis point move. But it appears Wall Street may have been tipped off a couple of days before the announcement, so the financial markets handled the bigger increase without too much volatility. Nonetheless, the larger than expected increase could have some impacts on the commercial real estate market. Prior to the announcement last Wednesday, many lenders had already baked a 50 basis point increase into their quartered rates. So lenders may pass the larger than expected rate increase through to buyers on deals under contract. Some buyers might absorb it, others may reduce their leverage to offset the change, but a lot of buyers may use this as an opportunity to take another bite of the apple and try to retrade their transaction price. The outcome of that renegotiation will vary depending on the property type, location, asset quality, and most importantly, the depth of the buyer pool for that property type at that time. So it's unlikely the rate increase will translate into a broad-based re-indexing of the market prices. Looking ahead, lending rates will likely face upward pressure, particularly from credit lenders like CMBS and life insurance companies they'll likely start to bake in a 75 basis point Fed rate increase for July instead of a 50 basis point increase. So quoted rates could bump up. Banks and balance sheet lenders may be a bit more lenient, especially with long-term clients, but commercial real estate interest rate momentum is definitely pushing upward. One of the more dramatic effects of the rate increase was the very rapid response from home lenders. The average rate on a 30-year mortgage jumped up by nearly 50 basis points last week, rising to 5.78%. As a result, the monthly payment on a median-priced home rose by $123, or about $1,500 per year. That squeezed more home buyers out of the market When mortgage rates were 5.23% on June 9th, about 26% of U.S. households had sufficient income to qualify for lending on a median-priced home. That's based on Freddie Mac's standard 28% debt ratio. The percentage of households that could qualify for that same mortgage after last week's rate increase fell to 24% on June 16th. What a difference a week can make. That reduction in affordability holds significant implications for apartment properties. The decline in the number of households that can qualify for a mortgage will lift demand for the already tight rental housing market. Because apartment vacancy rates are at a record low 2.4% right now, the Fed's rate increase could ultimately translate into even more apartment rent growth pressure. For the broader commercial real estate market, the impact will be less substantial. There's basically no direct impact on the space demand for industrial or office or retail properties. However, there could be an impact on the transaction market. Aside from the inevitable round of retrades the rate increase could spark, higher interest rates could thin the prospective buyer pool. Investors in 1031 exchanges probably won't be impacted nor will investors with deep reservoirs of capital. But investors who are highly dependent on financing may have less maneuvering room, and that could thin the buyer pool for some assets. Despite some buyers tapping out, there is still enough competition for assets to keep cap rates relatively stable for most property types in most markets. But rising interest rates have thinned the spread between the 10-year treasury and cap rates to just 260 basis points, the tightest the market has seen since 2007. In wrap-up, I want to remind investors that even though rates are on the rise, you need to consider the future supply and demand balance for each property. Even though interest rates are back to where they were in 2018, deals can still pencil and future rent growth 
could still outweigh the higher cost of capital. Be careful not to so intently focus on today's interest rate gyrations that you take your eyes off the horizon.